Hi folks, I am coming to you today from the driver's seat of my car. I'm on the road today driving from North Carolina up to the Hudson River Valley in upstate New York, which was of course home to the Hudson River School of Artists, uh, Albert Bierstadt, Frederick Church, among others, some of my heroes. But that's not why I'm going up there. I am going up this weekend to try to teach my first ever painting workshop. I'm gonna be co-teaching with my buddy Mark Poole um, and we've got 10 students and we're gonna be trying to teach them how to paint outdoors and to incorporate what they see and what they observe outdoors and bring it back into the studio and incorporate that into their paintings. We're gonna be at a place called the Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, which if you're not familiar with it, is a really unique and uh, charming place. Uh, I'll say it was, it's, it's just charming. That's the right word for it. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a replica World War I airfield on the east side of the Hudson River between Red Hook and Rhinebeck. And they've got a lot of World War I replica aircraft there. Uh, it's been around since the 60s, I think, when a guy named Cole Palin started it and it's still going strong they still put on air shows every weekend in the summer and this place is almost like a field of dreams for any aviation enthusiast it's just somewhere where you can come and relax and watch old planes fly around um, it's a lot of fun and a beautiful setting but uh yeah i got up uh, i left charlotte just before 6 a.m this morning and been on the road much of the day 1.30 now and I'm just south of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and uh, kind of stuck in traffic here. We're crawling along, which is uh, why I decided to break the boredom and take this opportunity to make an intro for this video. Uh, we're going to shoot video all weekend uh, and photos and uh, just kind of give you a glimpse of what old Rhinebeck is like. Uh, and kind of give you an idea of uh, our workshop and how that goes. Wish me luck, because I've never done this before. Um, I've still got about four hours of driving ahead of me, and when I get to my hotel tonight, I need to throw my stuff down and go over my notes again. But I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and if you ever get a chance, go up to Old Rhinebeck and give them a visit. All right, well, we're here at the Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, uh, just north of Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, Mark Poole and I are here. We're going to be holding the Color of Flight painting workshop this weekend. And right now, I'm here with Mr. Stu Somerville, uh, the director of Old Rhinebeck Aer Aerodrome. Mm -hmm. Stu, thank you so much for having us. You're quite Let welcome. Us come out here this weekend. Awesome. Would you do us a favor mm -hmm. and tell people a little bit of the history yep. of the Aerodrome? I was I did a little clip earlier where I said that the best word I can find for uh, Rhinebeck is charming. And that's exactly what it is. It's such a neat, unique place. Well, thank you very much. It's charming and it's unique. And uh, we are in our 63rd year of uh, putting on uh, the uh, History of Flight air show on Saturday and the World War I air show on Sunday. And I guess the genesis of the aerodrome goes way back to the, the early 1950s where Mr. Palin, uh, Cole Palin, our founder, um, uh, won a, a, uh, an auction with six original World War I airplanes um, that he eventually brought to this property, what we see here, which is, which is now the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. And originally he was not flying formal air shows. He would just get an airplane running, he would fly it around to, basically to enjoy himself, and people started coming. Um, after a while he put out a silk top hat and welcomed people to come in and watch him fly and folks would throw money into the silk top hat to encourage him and support him in uh, keeping his collection going. Then about in 1962, 1963, a wonderful thing happened, and that is the Charles Schultz comic strip Peanuts mm -hmm. came out featuring yep. Snoopy and the Red Baron. Interest in the aerodrome explodes. Uh, people started coming in waves. We got another um, uh, boost, if you will, from National Geographic in 1970, uh, who did a feature article on Old Rhinebeck, and we haven't looked back since. Well, that's great. And, yeah. and, and every summer, 
every weekend in the summer you put on a flying air show. We do. Where people can come out and they can see what it looks like to see a World War One airplane flying around or like you've even got a rep of the Spirit of St. Louis over yes. in the hangar over yes. here. You've got some pre-war airplanes. That's that correct. You don't fly, but they'll right. hop out here. Right. Mean, they'll get off the ground. Yeah, the Saturday show is the History of Flight Air Show featuring our Pioneer aircraft. Mm -hmm. We do a World War One teaser, we right. call it. Um, but the rest of it is Lindbergh era or Golden Age right. uh, aircraft. The Sunday show is uh, exclusively dedicated to the World War I mm -hmm. aircraft, which also features the dastardly Black Baron of <laughs> Rhinebeck, Sir Percy Goodfellow, and Trudy Trouba. Right. Well, yeah. that's, that's great. We're really looking forward to this weekend. Thanks so much again for having my us pleasure. out. my pleasure. We're looking forward to it. This is the first time in 18 years Excellent. I've been here. And well, I have such good memories. We have place. we have missed the aviation artists and your organization, and we're delighted to have you back, and uh, we'll work with that going forward. Great. Right. Thanks so Very much, Stu. Thank you. All right. Listen to that. That's the sound of a fabric-covered airplane. This is linen. It sounds like a drum when you tap it. And of course there are wooden stringers, what are called stringers, which are basically the wooden formers under here along the top of the airplane. And then there are three, or two of them, one right there, one right there, and then one top and bottom on this. Is, this is the SPAD 7. But these airplanes, for the most part, were covered in this. Up here on the fuselage, down here on the wing. Fabric covered airplanes. Now when you get up here around the cockpit, it's metal. Same is true up around the cowling. Metal parts there, painted with the same paint scheme. For day one of the workshop, we started off with some basic classroom academics. Although we had artists of all different skill levels taking this workshop, few of them had ever actually painted plein air, so Mark and I wanted to review some basic concepts and make sure everyone was speaking the same language before we went out and applied those ideas. After lunch, we set up our painting kits and began to paint the Sopwith Pup. Since it was Friday, we had the whole place to ourselves with very little distraction. I chose this spot right here because when I look at this airplane, I see some repeating shapes. I see the, the circle of the cowling, I see the circle in the wheels, I see the circle of the cowling going farther back. There's a lot of repeating things going on here that make it interesting. There are also big shapes here. Now that's not to say you can't find interesting angles from all the or other you know setups around the airplane. I stood back here on the uh, backside and kind of toyed with using that, but I like cowlings. I just like the reflections in the cowlings and I want to play with that. Well, that's pretty much said everything I could hope to say. Mine is a bit more uh, dumbed down, if you want to call it that. Uh, I, I ran off and forgot my paints yesterday, so I had to nab some of the stuff that Russ had available. So I was working very minimally, and I used a three-color palette yesterday. So uh, I grabbed some of his cobalt teal, also some French ultramarine blue, which got me through the blues, and then uh, your uh, alizarin. Mm -hmm. uh, I used that, and then uh, titanium white. I've actually got a little bit warmer white that I'm going to use today as well, just for some of the the warmer areas. Uh, I can see on the, the wheels or whatnot, but uh, everything else I think I can mix. I, I don't have the uh, yellow ochre with me or any of the siennas. I can I can get all that with what I've already got here. For day two of the workshop, we began with a brief critique session of the previous day's work, followed by more plein air work. For this round of painting, we introduced the human figure to the work, which turned out to be me. After holding this pose for some time, I noticed a mysterious couple come in, set up painting kits, and begin to paint behind our class. 
As it turns out, it was none other than well-known artist and author James Gurney, creator of the Dinotopia series, as well as other art instruction books and blogs. James and his wife Jeanette live in the area, and they heard we were going to be at Old Rhinebeck, so they came out to visit us. They painted our workshop students as the students painted the airplane and me. For the final day of the workshop, we started off the morning once again with critiques of the previous day's works, but then we set everybody free to move up and down the flight line and choose their own subjects. All right, all right, here we are, day three of the uh, Color of Flight painting workshop here at Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. Uh, we've had two really full days here of painting and, and work, and I'm already tired, but it's been a great weekend. I'm, here with Mark Poole, my co-conspirator in all this, <laughs> um, and, and co-teacher. And um, Mark, what are your feelings about the weekend? This man? has been phenomenal. What a, what a unique experience uh, from an artist standpoint, from an aviation lover, lover standpoint. Um, our first time to do this here at Old Rhinebeck with an invitation to come back and do this again. Lessons have been learned, a lot has been accomplished. And you just can't replace experiences like this unless you're actually here. You know, what, where else can you see vintage aircraft like this, not only on the ground, but above our heads as we're painting? And what better location to, to capture those in the environment that, you know, we, we don't normally get a chance to see them in. So it's been such a great, unique opportunity for all those partic participating. Yeah, and it's, uh, aside from just the setting, with all these unique airplanes out here, we've had some surprises. Like yesterday, we're out here painting and I'm modeling for the students and I look up and, and who should be out there painting behind the students but James Gurney. I mean, the guy that does Dinotopia and writes all these instruction manuals for artists. I, I think every working artist today knows who he is, but it was really awesome that he dropped by and uh, kind of chatted with our workshop, chatted with us, and what a nice guy, man. He just uh, down to earth, and we talked shop with him for a while. He painted with us, and it gives everyone here a chance to see that you know we can talk shop with other artists, and, and he was no different. He wants to hear from us uh, our insights, and uh, everyone is learning in 360 degrees, so it's just a, a fantastic opportunity you just don't get elsewhere. That's right, and, and I, I can't say enough about the folks here at Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, how hospitable they've been to us. I mean, they've basically almost given us free reign of the place, you know, within within the limits set by it, the, the FAA, of course. Um, <laughs> but uh, we've just had so much fun out here, and uh, I think the students, we've gotten great feedback from the students. Uh, everybody seems to enjoy it. We've enjoyed seeing the growth over two days of everybody working, uh, and just sort of the little discoveries that they're having of, oh yeah, I just learned I could do this, and wow, what a great learning experience. So, uh, And we all experience that. It, it, it's a, a constant learning uh, for everybody. The, the journey never stops. And for those that, that don't have the chance to participate you know, this year, uh, take advantage when these things come around again. For us that have been impacted by COVID and the inability to get together like we normally do every year at the forums, uh, this is a slice of normalcy that all of us are just pining to get back to and it's been, it fuels the tank. It, 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 it gives you the motivation to go forward and to continue on and uh, you just can't 
wait until the next opportunity comes around. That's right. And, and the folks here are already talking about next time, yep. which is pretty exciting because I'm, I'm already, I'm, I'm, this is our first time and I'm already taking mental notes of, okay, next time we come here, we should change this. We should do this a little differently. I mean, it's going to be a constant learning experience, but being our first workshop, I think it went pretty well. And it's the nature of plein air. Yeah. You have to adjust based on the situations that come your way that are unexpected. You, you improvise, adapt, and you overcome. Yeah. And uh, I think everyone's done that very successfully here. And, and just we've been blessed with just fantastic weather. And uh, yeah, looking forward to knocking this last day out. All right, man. Well, you and I both want to go paint and Let's take paint. pictures. So uh, uh, let's get to it today. We got one more day of this before we both head out. And uh, it's just been a great weekend. Uh, yep, no doubt about it. All right.